Hey everyone, this is Aaron, and today I'm here with a question that I actually received from an educator. Um, and here is the question that we're going to tackle today. How do you prevent students from sharing a Google quiz? And so one of the things that's going to happen as we move into using these online assessments and tools is obviously kids are going to try to find workarounds to beat the system. It's not something that we can prevent 100% of the time, but there are ways to help make this happen. Now before I get into the tips, I want you to think about this for a minute. And I want you to think about this question. Why is this a problem for you? You know, I think um, as we think about our quizzes and assessments, why is it a bad thing if students in the next class answer all the questions correctly? I mean, doesn't that imply or achieve the goal of what we're after? We want to create these assessments in which kids show that they know the answers. It's, a, it's the exact same that we're trying to um, achieve as a teacher. Um, I look at it as, is it teaching or is it just not the way in terms of how we, in our mind, imagine kids to process and gain the knowledge? Um, a lot of times these assessments are low-level questions. And so who really cares in the big scheme of things if they got the information by studying their own old school system of note cards and memorizing things and rote memorizations, or if they were connecting online, grabbing things from the internet, or just simply sharing back and forth because the goal is to move beyond low-level thought and get into higher, deeper application. And that's where the real learning takes place. And so if information is exchanged at a low level in terms of um, – matching up a fact or vocab words, whatever it may be, is it a big deal knowing that they're going to have to apply and do some high-level thought down the road and that's where you can see the learning? What's more important? Um, you know, I think that a lot of times, why can't the quiz questions be looked up? If you're a one-to-one -one device platform or kids are on a computer taking a, a Google quiz, let them look it up. Isn't that what we do all the time as people on our phones and on Facebook and Google and Wikipedia? We're constantly looking up information. So why would a quiz be any different than that? Um, a lot of times online quizzes, helping kids look things up gives them a focus. We always talk about how kids don't know how to search the internet. They don't know how to find information. Maybe the quiz could be a focus piece where they're reinforcing their, their basic knowledge so they can go do the higher level stuff that we want them to get to. Um, that's where the projects, project-based learning and inquiry-based learning start to come into play. You get them, let them dig that low level stuff and then we move on. Um, and maybe as a teacher, it shouldn't be a surprise tactic. Why not give them the, qu the questions ahead of time? Why not point out the significant areas uh, right away from the very beginning so they know where to focus their energy and thoughts? I mean, they are kids. There's a million things going on in their lives. As teachers, we're stressed too. How many times as educators do we wish, why can't you just tell me exactly what it is you want so I can get it done? Why can't our quizzes be the same way? Now, that was my rant. But let's get into the tools because that doesn't solve the issue at hand. How exactly can we prevent students from sharing a Google quiz? And there are some techniques that we can't use in case you didn't enjoy my rant on the point of quizzes. The very first thing that you can do in a quiz are several things. You have the opportunity in your settings here, so this is just a, a, a basic quiz here, um, and we'll just play with this one. In your settings, you can go here, you've got general presentation and quizzes, and you can obviously play with these, but where we want to go is presentation. One of the things that you can do is shuffle question order. So every time someone opens up a quiz, it'll actually shuffle the question order in which they see that. Um, that is one option for you. Will it solve everything? No, but at least they won't have the exact order down um, for them to process. So there is one simple thing. Another technique that I've seen online from several people is simply changing the theme. So if you go to a bright color and then you're in your classroom walking around as you should, you will see when kids leave the screen. So if I have a bright green or a bright red, all their devices, and you're in the back kind of walking through, 
you should be able to see very quickly if someone doesn't have the bright green theme on their option. The other thing that you can do is shuffle answers. So if I jump over here, um, I'm going to take you back to a quiz I've already created just for the time's sake here. Um, well, maybe here if this internet will pop up. What we can do uh, is similar to shuffling answers is right here. Well, let's just go back here. Let's do this. You can shuffle the answer responses. So, what animal is Frankie Mae? Now we can type in your dog, cat, bird, monkey. Now we can go down here to settings and we can choose shuffle option order. So what that will do for each person that opens up a quiz is these options will be different. So let's take a look at this here. We open up the quiz, bird, dog, monkey, cat. Okay. Now if we were to preview it again, cat, monkey, bird, dog. And so that option right here in these three dots, shuffle option order, will change those up for each person. So we've talked about one, changing option order. We've talked about changing the theme to a bright color. And we've talked about in settings, going into presentation, shuffling the question order. Now there is one more thing that we can do. And so what we're gonna do here is we are going to add a question called what is the password? And we're going to move this to a short answer. What we can do in here then is we can go down here to these three dots. And you can do this with short answer, long answer, check boxes, and grids. We can pick data validation. And what this means is they won't be able to move on until they get this correctly. And you can choose between number, text, the length, or regular expression. We're not going to mess with these at this time. Let's just pick number. And I want to make it equal to. And I want the number to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then this will just show when it's the wrong password. Now, what will happen is we want to create a new section. And that's where this question is. And this is where the real quiz will be. Again, either where you want your questions to be. So now, after section one, we're going to continue to the next section and then the quiz will start. So here's what happens. First thing they have to do is they have to type in the right password. So if I start typing in numbers, it's wrong. But as soon as I type in the right password, it lets me go to the next section and then the quiz begins. So the beauty of this is you would be able to go in on your quiz and each class period you could edit what you want this answer to be. So period one this could be the password, period two could be another password and you could change it. You wouldn't have to reinvent the quiz, you could just change the password in between sessions which would be really really nice. Um, the other thing that you can do is get this going. So if you send this out and put in your Google Classroom or whatever it may be, you can just pull up, edit, boom, away you go. The last tip, tip number five on how to prevent students from sharing a Google quiz, probably the method that I would use the most would be to go here to responses. So here's all your questions, your quiz that you've built out. You can go here to responses and you can just simply quit accepting responses. So when the period's over, turn it off. They can share it all they want. It doesn't matter. You're not taking anything. When the next period pops up, boom, you can turn it back on. So we've done five different options to summarize. Number one, change the theme to a bright color to make sure they're on the screen without searching the internet, doing whatever it is that you don't want them to do. We have talked about within the question down here, in our settings, 
shuffling the option order. We have talked about also then shuffling the quiz question order in the question order. We have then also talked about creating a section and doing data validation down here with the short answer, long answer, you could do checkbox or grid, the three dots, data validation, putting in a password and changing that. And the last one in the responses, accept, not accept. So here are five things, but more importantly, I hope you think about the practice and the goal and the purpose of the quiz and what it is you're really after. I would love your feedback, questions, thoughts, other ideas. These are just a few of what I've learned. I hope you find this helpful. Best of luck, and let's continue to share this journey to enhance education to ensure that students are indeed learning and not just being robots of obedience. Take care.